So conferences of the parties or COPs are United Nations organised meetings where almost all of the world's nations come together to negotiate reductions in greenhouse gas emissions that would keep the warming of the atmosphere within safe and habitable limits. 2023 has been a remarkable year. It's almost certain to be the warmest year ever recorded. It's been a year of climate extremes, absolutely brutal heat, terrible floods, uh, colossal wildfires and some really searing droughts all around the world. Uh, and so that's focused a lot of people's minds on, on this process. Since the COP process started in 1992, more greenhouse gases have been released to the atmosphere than were released in the whole of the previous 240 years. Um, so you could say that it's, it's not been successful as a process, although that would, be, that would be harsh on a lot of people who've worked very hard in good faith. As a negotiation, it will only ever be as successful as the governments and their lobbyists allow it to be. It's been a contentious meeting so far. Um, there was widespread scepticism when the United Arab Emirates was selected as host. Uh, it's one of the world's major oil producing nations. Um, there was further scepticism when um, Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber was uh, announced as the COP president because he is also the boss of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. So hopefully this scepticism will prove unfounded. Um, but it's a legitimate concern given the uh, fossil fuel industry's track record of obstruction uh, on emissions reductions. The COP21 in 2015 in Paris was, was very clear that to keep the atmosphere within safe limits, no new fossil fuel resources and no new fossil fuel infrastructure should be built. China, Russia, Iran, Brazil, Canada, the US, they've all got fossil fuel expansion plans that are bigger than the Abu Dhabi National Oil Companies. Likewise, Europe, while it's been positioning itself as an ambitious supporter of fossil fuel phase-out, has invested over a trillion dollars in fossil fuels since the Paris Agreement and over $130 billion in 2022 alone. Now, subsidies for the fossil fuel industry globally are about 7% of gross domestic product, and that's about twice what is spent globally on education. The main achievement of last year's COP27 in Egypt was to establish what is known as a loss and damage fund. That would be a financial fund supported by the world's developed nations to help the developing nations to deal with the worst uh, and most damaging effects of climate extremes and to develop without fossil fuel dependence. Since then, negotiations on establishing this fund have essentially stalled. Paramount as the COPs are, it's important to remember that there are many other actors and many other institutions around the world who are working for a clean energy transition. At Loughborough, uh, the, uh, the Centre for Sustainable Transitions, Energy, Environment and Resilience, or STEER, um, is levering UK government funds to work on climate change adaptation and climate resilient development. Um, and likewise, our programmes of education are very much focused on sustainable development. Our climate change masters are delivering skills on energy and economic modelling for sustainability, which should help close, ultimately, the gap on climate finance, which is going to be so important at COP28.